Welcome to another Disciple Dojo Study Bible Review Kids Edition. Now, I have reviewed children's Bibles before. If you've missed that, I'll put a link in the video description to our previous look at some popular children's Bibles that are on the market. But for this review, I wanted to enlist some expert help. So while I was on vacation with my family, I actually got my niece, Natalie, to take a look at these three study Bibles. So she spent a few days looking through them, seeing what she liked, what she didn't like. And then we sat down and we had a discussion about it. Now, this was not done in the studio and you'll be able to tell when you hear the sound quality. And also because it was shot on my cell phone, the autofocus kind of comes in and out a little bit. Just bear with us. It was shot on location. So without further ado, let's get into it. You ready? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be nervous? Don't be quiet now. Nat, I want you to get your thoughts on these Bibles for kids. Because you're a kid, right? Yes. How old are you? Eleven. When are you going to be twelve? April 25th. Okay, so you got a while. Mm -hmm. All right, this first one that we looked at, this was the Holy Land Kids, what is this called? The Illustrated, Illustrated Holy Bible for Kids. Illustrated Holy Bible for Kids. Now this one came with something cool. What did it come with? A poster. And you can show the poster. The first side is like a map. All right, so that's cool. And then the second side is a family tree. Is a family tree going all the way from Adam and Eve all the way over to Mary and Joseph. So Jesus' family tree and a map, and that slides right in here, right? So that's cool. You can always keep that map with you. Now this study Bible, I noticed it had, what makes it this different from the other ones? It's illustrated. Like there's Noah, obeying God and building the ark. My favorite thing was in Proverbs. Yeah. Because like, it's kind of hard to understand that without like a picture knowing what's happening. Right. And then in Proverbs, it kind of showed you what it meant. So there were some pictures and they put the sayings and then... Like they showed you the road. Oh yeah, like the roads. That's pretty cool. And then do not be friends with angry people. So you have her walking away from the girl that's angry. The girl, angry girl kind of looks like you now. She's got blonde hair. One thing it didn't have though, is it didn't have any study notes. Nothing oh, that yeah, tells I you. That. So would that kind of be confusing sometimes if you don't know what's going on in the story? Sometimes, but I like how it labels the story so you know which one we're reading. Yeah, it does do that. that. Does help. Did you notice in this one that there aren't any verse or chapter numbers in the text? Oh, I didn't yeah. Did that. you see that? How they put them right up here, but then they're not any verses or chapters in there, so it makes it like a book. What do you think about that? I kind of like that. Yeah. I like how it shows the story. So you know where you are and where you're reading, but it doesn't have the numbers in there. Like you know what story it is. Yes. And I think it's to help it read more like a book. Because yeah. most books that you read don't have numbers and verses. Do they? Other than that, though, that's really all this has, right? Like, there's no dictionary in the back. I mean, Revelation, that's the last page. And then that's it. Do they have a table of contents? Let's see. The Old Testament and the New Testament. And then there's a note about the NIRV. Do you know what the NIRV is? New International Reader's Version. Yeah, do you know what's that? why that's different from the NIV, the New International Version? I know it has readers, so it's like for kids. Yes, that's exactly right. She's smart. Yeah, it's made to be like the NIV, but at a slightly lower reading level. So, like, so kids can read it. Yeah, so kids can read it. Or people that are learning English. English is their second language. Oh, yeah. So it's easier for them to read. It does have this in the beginning that talks about the NIRV and how some verses are not in this that are in the King James Version. That's called text criticism. That's grown-up stuff. But yeah, that's it. Then it starts, there's the Old Testament, and then Genesis starts right there. In my Bible reviews, I always talk about how the Bibles treat Genesis, and there are no study notes, but they put these six pictures and what are these pictures of? Days of creation. Yeah, so you can remember. So what was day one? Do you remember? Whenever God said, let there be light, and then I said, so light and dark. And then day two? Heaven. No, day two, well, sort of, because it's the same word. The like sky. heaven and sky. The sky, yeah, and the waters. Um, right? The sky the and the waters. One thing they didn't put water in. I know, they just put the sky separating the waters. And then the third day, that was like like grass and stuff. Right, the land the comes land. up. And then the grass, the vegetables, the plants. The fourth day was stars, moons. Sun, moon, and stars, yep. And then the fifth day was what? Was it at 
animals, and then the sixth day Almost. was yeah. human. Yeah, well, the sixth day was animals and human. Oh, fish and birds. Yeah, the fish and the birds rule over the sky and the waters. So each of the three days corresponds to. Oh, and the sun starts to rule over um, the light and the dark. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's why I said let there be a great light and a lesser light to and give light on the earth. Yeah, so you can remember, yeah. just remember the first three days and then put the things that are in charge of those on the next three days and then you have the creation story. Just easier with pictures because you understand it, especially like whenever it's not a story, it's more of like just wisdom. So you can tell like your way versus God's way, you should go God's way. Yeah, it makes sense. Because as kids, you don't really get understand all this fancy Bible stuff. <laughs> That's true. Like that picture, right? Here. The son will not die because of his father, so it has to hurt him. Yeah, see all the sins of his father? He was obsessed with money and gold. So greedy. And what does the sword represent? Murder. Murder and violence. And then what's that gold cow in the back represent? Uh, how do you say that? Idol? Idolatry. Because people in Ezekiel were saying, God's just mad with us because of what our ancestors did. Yeah. And God's saying, no, 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 I'm mad with you because of what you did. So he had to remind the people of that. So this is the, what is this called again? The Illustrated Holy Bible for Kids. Illustrated Holy Bible for Kids. Out of five stars, what would you give it? Five stars. Five out of five stars. I like the pictures in there because it helps understand. All right. Picture. This next one that we're going to look at. This is the hands-on Bible. I'm excited for that one. Why are you excited for this one? Because it has like experiments that can like help you learn about God. And it feels like you're reading a newspaper kind of. So they lay the pages out. And it's like, like it's Adam and Eve are in like in the jail section. They're in the police, the wanted section. Yeah, the mug shots that they put in the paper. You know, those ones you see in gas stations with who all got DUIs that week. I like whenever Bibles have in, like interesting things in them. Yeah. Like, because I feel like it makes it more interesting to read. Because if you look at a normal Bible, it's just a bunch of tiny words. And it doesn't look very inviting, like you want to read it. But right. whenever you look at this, it's like you want to read it. And it's like a newspaper, real estate news. Abraham and Lot split land. Abraham and then and it Lot. says, see Genesis 13 for detail. Yeah, they ask a question and then they you have to find the answer and they tell you where it is. And then each book has a Jesus connection at the bottom where it shows oh, I like that. how the book points to or talks about or gets people ready for Jesus. And then there's not any study notes on these pages either. Yeah, there are not a lot of pictures. There are some in the introduction sections. Like, it's before each book. I do, again, they have the um, labels. You see, this one does have verse numbers. Yeah, and it shows what story it's on, too. It has mm -hmm. both of those. Yeah, yeah. Like chapter numbers and verse headings. And what it, is this? Yeah, What's this page? It shows you how to make clay, mm -hmm. and it shows you what you can make. God made the animals. Yeah, and how crazy different they are. So then they tell you how to make clay. Why? Because God is our potter, like the man who makes pottery. Yeah, so you can get to make your own. He like makes us. Yeah. And he made us, and God made all these creatures his way, so we can make stuff like how God did. So you get a chance God. to be creative. So it says create a never before seen animal, plant, or rock, and name it like God named everything in Genesis. I like it. So there's a couple of these. There's oh, one yeah, that goes with the flood. This one is making tablets, like Ten Commandment tablets. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's cool, and then that's Exodus, the next page. So they don't have those on every page, but sprinkled throughout all the book introductions. And then this one, they oh, have these key, key verses. verses. Yeah. Map it out. Why do you think they call it the hands-on Bible? Because like you do creative stuff. Like yeah, that. it's all about you doing crafts. There's one with the flood. It was about make your own rainbow and then write promises on drops hanging from it. And so whenever you look at the rainbow, you remember the promises that you made. Oh. And then that's what God does with the that's rainbow. Cool. Yeah, there's some cool crafts in here. Now at the back. Where to turn in my Bible when I feel angry or afraid. Yeah, so when you feel angry, when you feel afraid. And there's a bunch of these. When you feel alone. Oh, this is depressed. good. Because like, if somebody's ever feeling sad and they don't know like, where to look in the Bible, they can turn to the back of it. And it's telling you what? In the blue. It's telling you where it is. Yeah. Like where you can find where you can turn these verses. Turn yeah. And find the rest of it. There's a bunch of them. You have doubts about God. When you're worried about going to heaven. When you need to obey. 
all kinds of life situations people would go through. You can find where to go in the Bible for. And I like lessons. that because sometimes I don't know what to do, and yep. this can help you. Yeah. I think you're right. Now look at this section. Did you know? Frequently oh, asked questions about the Bible. Who wrote the Bible? When was the Bible written? Why was the Bible written? Will God put new stories in the Bible? Is all the Bible true? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Why does the Bible have two parts? Well, I was that's a good question. That later. I, I ask think. some of these all the time. Well, most adults. Why can't I see those. God? I've wondered that for a long time. Everybody has. A lot of these questions people never get answers to when they're kids, and they grow up and become adults, and they still don't have answers to the questions. So this explains a little bit more of some of those big questions people have. And then beginning to the end. Oh. Yeah, so this tells what is going on with Genesis and how it relates to what we see in Revelation. The fancy word for that in theology is, we're going to do a little Latin. I heard this. You know, inclusio. Yeah, I don't know that. <laughs> Inclusio, when something happens at the beginning and then a similar thing happens at the end. In English, we call it bookending. People are doomed to death. Death is defeated. Believers live forever with God. Yeah. Revelation puts everything right that Genesis went wrong. Oh. Oh, now I see. See? That's good. All the stuff tears that went wrong in Genesis. Sorry, no more tears. No more sin or sorrow. Yeah. Everything went wrong in the beginning. And then it all got fixed by Jesus in the end. Exactly. Jesus' appearance after his resurrection. Heroes in the book of Acts. And then... The dictionary. I would spend a lot of time in here. So what is a concordance? Dictionary. No, it's different. What is a dictionary? It you where it is. Like yeah. The dictionary tells you what? What it is. What the word means. What yep. the word means. A concordance tells you what? Where it is. Where to find that word in the Bible. Oh, this like abandoned. Summer. You can look in Joshua 1, 5, and I will never fail you or abandon you. Exactly. That's how a concordance works. So if you're like, I remember this verse, but you're having a hard time finding it, you can look it up in the concordance. And you can find it. Yep. And you know where it is. And then after the concordance, this is what a Bible village, a picture of what a Bible village would have looked like. Like, like back then. Oh, that's cool. And, it, and all the... Ways it's different. Bible time village. Yeah, this is cool because it's not a normal map; it's a drawing. And then there's one about the Exodus. This is where they think Mount Sinai. You want to know a secret though? Yeah. Nobody knows if this is Mount Sinai or not. Yeah. And there's Nobody another. Knows where Mount Sinai? No. If you look on maps and other study Bibles, there'll be a little question mark by Mount Sinai. Wait, isn't that where the Ten Commandments came from, Mount Sinai? Mm -hmm. Isn't that where um, it was where God actually spoke to Moses? Like he actually heard him talk? In what form? He was tending his sheep and he looked over and he saw something and it was weird and so he went the over. The burning bush. Yeah, that's right. Bush. Now I'm thinking of it. Yes. And that was on Mount Sinai. Oh. So wherever the burning bush was, that's also where Mount Sinai was. God said, you'll come back to this mountain and you'll bring my people. But this area some people think that this is it this is traditionally it but there's another one over here in saudi arabia what do you think it's? i think it's the one in saudi arabia i'll tell you why because in the bible this land here is never called midian this is called midian and mount sinai is in midian oh. which is where jethro and so i think and this water right here in the Bible, Solomon kept his ships right here at this port. Mm -hmm. And this body of water, the Bible calls it Yam Suf, which means Red Sea or Sea of Reeds. Uh -huh. So some people think this is... Where did God Red split sea. the Red Sea? Well, that's the question. A lot of people think it's like one of these lakes up here, or some people think it's here. Oh, I think it's the ocean, because you can't drown in marshes if you're an army, but you can in the ocean. It's, it's like, I think it's this one. I think That's it's cool. This. That God just was like split and they could all just walk, walk through. And yeah. And then this is the New Testament map of who? Um, Paul's there. That's right. Where Paul went around all over the Roman Empire. And then the last one is. Footprints of Jesus, the last week. Yeah. Is, is that the last week before Jesus was crucified? Uh huh. You know what city this is? Um, the temple. Mount of Olives, Garden of Gethsemane. Israel? 
It's in Israel. Do you know what city it is? Bethlehem? Bethlehem would be about five miles this way. Oh, uh, so maybe Jerusalem? Jerusalem, yes. Oh, that's where oh, um, the cross is what? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the hands-on Bible, a lot of activities, no study notes. But beginning introductions have fun facts and things mm-hmm. like that. So out of five stars, what do you give this one? You gave that one five. What do you give this one? I gave it a four. A four, okay. Why that a five and this a four? Did you just get over eager and give that a five? No, because this one has a hardback. Oh, that's a good point. This is a paperback. My bag was a paperback. I this... like mess them up on it. So okay. Like the hardback's like. All right, all right. That makes sense. It makes sense. This but, might like, be available in another binding if you yeah. paid more. You might get it in leather. But like reading wise, I like I give them both a five star for reading. Okay, for the content, yeah. five stars. The binding. They're both so easy to understand at being a kid. I think and that's it's a like, good. If I look in the real Bible that like mom has, it's kind of I'm like confused in it. But if I look in these, I understand. Hey, you and me both sometimes, and I teach the Bible. Okay, let's do this last one. We only got a few minutes. So this is the what? Seek and explore Holy Bible. Yes, and this is also in the NIRV, so the more simplified NIV. Now, this one, I'm gonna show you this. Do you see these colors? Rainbow. Do you know what these rainbows represent? I, mean, I never could figure that out. I looked. The brown pages are all Israel's covenant history books. Uh-huh. Then the orange pages are Israel's wisdom and songs. So all of the poetry, oh, and the songs. Isn't it like how they group all of the in the Bible? That's what I'm telling you, yeah. The yellow ones are all Israel's Israel prophets, prophets, which is a big chunk, because there's a lot. And green is stories about Jesus. Oh, yeah. that would be my favorite. So those are the Gospels and the Book of Acts. And then the purple are letters from other Christians, like mm-hmm. Peter. And then the last one is, Pink. and that is the Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. You know what Apocalypse means? Remember the Wizard of Oz? Remember when Toto pulled the curtain back? Remember that big green guy was in there? Yeah, and then Toto ran over and pulled the curtain back, and they saw that what they thought was a big green guy was actually a little man. Oh, yeah, that was funny. That's an apocalypse. Oh. Apocalypse means to remove the curtain. Whenever you find something and you thought it was something else, but it wasn't? Almost. It means to see something how it really is, not how it looks. Yeah. So when you pull the curtain off of something, that's called an apocalypse. We find out what it really is. Yeah. So revelation comes reveal. from the word to reveal. That's right. So it's the revealing of Jesus. The Seek and Explore Bible, it's themed around an adventure, adventure trek. So you and these ways are going on an adventure. Because I feel like kids would want to go on an adventure every day, so they would like read it every day. Yeah. Treasure hunt. It's like a treasure hunt, yeah. The, reading the Bible is a great adventure. All right, we don't have time to do all that, though. <laughs> we got to go faster. So at the beginning, there's this thing called Base Camp, and it shows you all the sites, and these sites are... The books of the Bible? Sections of like the Bible. Like uh, Books, yeah. And this is really good. This breaks it down into six overall chunks of the Bible that you have to go in that tell one big story then say hello to the way you meet the ways now who are the ways there's green well, what are they though they're like little is that a goat that's antelope talkie that you that's your animal talkie it's a monkey yeah and then there's an elephant and a is that a hyena it's a meerkat oh I thought it was a hyena a hippo Tiger, and then that's a leopard. Yeah. Jaguar. Yeah, and then a bear. And then there's a zebra. A zebra. Humming. Do you know what the ways are each representing? There's nine of them. There's like, they all make noise. Mm, not exactly. But they're all like something. They're all different ways people learn. That's why they're called the ways. So these are the ways that children learn logical reasoning, visualizing, discussing and debating, mm-hmm. learning with others and engagement. Experimenting and doing kinesthetics, which means using movement uh, and using nature. So all of the, yeah, and so all of the way I learn best is by pictures. Yeah, you're definitely visual. GP arty. Nature is greeny. Talky is through discussion. Thinky is through logical deduction. Mine's talky and arty. Yes, absolutely. I learned through hearing, yeah. like people talk to me, and then I learned that. I like this one. Any likes to be by himself. That's, That's when you need to get away sometimes. That's definitely, I'm any for sure. Then there's a, at the beginning of each book, 
the, oh I like that yeah. how it so it shows you what it like what the book is about mm -hmm. stuff that you need to know to read it and then important people yeah and that's it though after that it begins and the there's these little notes yes now this is of these three this is the only one that does have study notes and i like the study notes you can look at them after mm -hmm. reading a section of it mm -hmm. and it kind of like breaks everything down yeah i feel like that's what it does. that's exactly what it does it tells you what this is this is what genesis 1 1 it gives you a little note on that mm -hmm. this gives you a little note see it tells you genesis 2 7 there's a note on that and then these are the ways each way he pops up every now and then with a different thing. So this is Join Me, the hippo. Mm -hmm. And he has a group activity, a rapid fire game that you can do with a group of people. I like it because it helps all kids like how they learn. And right. so it shows you each one. Yeah, Genesis 3, 8 through 10, Hardy has an exercise that you can do. Draw face to show how Adam might have felt. Use color from Hardy's page. Yeah, Hardy's color chart, which is back on page 19, all the different feelings so sometimes you don't know how to say what you feel and so hardy has this little chart it tells you you know you can use red and you're angry right now, is rage. I'm yellow. yellow is happy I'm fine. yeah gray loneliness brown border why is green always jealous because people are green with envy you ever heard that phrase somebody's green with envy envy means like jealousy so it's a phrase. And red has always been angry because like red is angry. And you see red. red. Like, yeah. And then there's Artie in Genesis wait, 15. Wait, is that the one where you did the star? Mm -hmm. And like God made a. We saw that at the Bible Museum. Yeah. Like cool. all the stars appeared and it said count how many it told us to count them. Yeah. So that's it. This one does have study notes, but there's usually only one study note on a page. Mm -hmm. Some pages don't have any study notes but some pages have study notes and an activity. I like the activities, they help me better. And then at the end, let's see if this one had anything after Revelation. I can't remember if it did or not. After Revelation, it's a painted map, like an illustrated map, and all the events that took place. Exodus journey. Yeah. And then this one is whose journey? Paul's life mission. I know the capital. All these provinces he went to, and these are all in the Roman Empire. Ilkurum? <laughs> Ilk? Ilkurum? Oh, I was way off. <laughs> I Ilk probably am too. Cappadocia, Galatia. So we're at the letters of the Galatians. Is it Judea or Judea? Ju you can say either. And then after that, the ministry of Jesus. There is... And that like shows everything. Oh, it has these little numbers. Right, and those numbers go down here. So you can see there's Bethlehem and that's where you're born, yeah. And then there's stories at the end, Bible stories for you to read. And they're color coded. Oh, I like color coded. That helps me. What do these colors match up to? Um, each like the section of the Bible yeah. right here. Yeah, what color is in like that section? What types of books are in. And, and then Hardy. Hardy is saying goodbye to you. So this one, all the pages are full color pages, did you? In, in the first one we looked at, they're all full color pages. But in the second one, they're black and white and blue. So they're not yeah. full color. It's just three color. I like it whenever Bibles have like fun things in them because it just helps you understand it more. Because sure. Jesus' life was very confusing. It, yeah, it came out. Because there's like weird them. words and then there's like all this stuff in there and that just breaks it down. Yeah. So five stars. Four stars. For content, four stars for the binding. What would you give this one? I give it four stars for the inside and like four stars for the outside. Okay, why four stars for the inside of this one and not and five stars for the inside? I feel of like one? this one it just helped me understand it because it had so many pictures. I know it didn't have any notes in it, but I still yeah. really liked it. The pictures are nice. Now think about this though. If you come to a page with no pictures in this and no notes in it, and you come to a page with no pictures in this and no notes in it, and then you come to a page like in this one with no pictures and no notes. So now you have these three. There's no pictures. There's no notes. So is there any, you would rate them all the same? Is there one you like better? I don't like how it doesn't have any of these little numbers because like at church, every time on um, Sunday nights, yeah. we always do like this game thing. 
where we have to try to find the verse. Yeah, so this one, there's no verse numbers in it, so that'd be hard to find the verse. Now, one thing you notice about the difference between these two is how, how are the pages laid out. This one, like, is this one is in like little chunks, kind of, like you know how they like split the pages. Yeah, you know what that's this called. This is the only one that actually has that. Yeah, the this, rest are like reading a book. This is two column, two column, column format, and this is single column format. This one is single column format. This one it makes me feel like I'm just reading a whole book. Right. So what this one would be good for reading, like you are reading a book, but maybe not for using in church. Yeah. You need like, to find a verse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would probably use like these two for church yeah. and then this one for like, I guess, studying. Yeah. And you, this one has a lot of room. You can write your own notes on the pages. Yeah. I like how it notes. has room. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's the nice thing about single column is there's a lot of room on the pages. So this one, Seek and Explore, does have some study notes. Not very many, but some of them. And the hands-on Bible doesn't have study notes, but it has good book introductions and a lot of activities to do. Now, both of these are paperback. I like all of these, and I would get all of these because they would all help me. (laughs) Natalie says they're all good, and I actually agree. I think each of these are good. Just based off looking in them and reading them Mm -hmm. as a kid, I would give them all like a bajillion stars. A bajillion stars. I like the hardback better just because it's more like durable. It's not going to get damaged. And I always, I always accidentally carry the top of it. Well, that's why you need to get a Bible, a cover. Bible cover and then you you're set. Like carry it. Yeah. This one for use with your parents at home. Mm-hmm. Like for activities. This one probably to take to church because it's got mm-hmm. verses. And then maybe this one to read if you just want to read the story and understand it and see pictures. Fair to say, and the cool map. This one does. I like the map that this one comes with. Wait, which one color. has the thing that like shows you if you're ever feeling like sad? Which one? Is with it? That was the hands-on Bible. That's my favorite thing about it. Yes. Some kids are like problems, like their parents are fighting, yes. and they can just be like, "I need Jesus." Yes. So, like, turn the hands-on Bible does not have study notes, but it has a lot of resources at the back and helps throughout the text. The Seek and Explore does have some study notes, but it doesn't have anything at the back, concordance, or any of those helps. So of these three, I would probably say this should be the all-around kids Bible. And you can bring it to church also. Yeah, and then these other two would be maybe more fun, but I would I would be comfortable giving any of these to somebody. Yeah, I would feel like any of them would help. Natalie, thank you for being my expert reviewer. I'm not a kid. Last time I reviewed kids' Bibles, and it was me, an adult, and it wasn't very kid-friendly. So maybe some kids will watch this video. Should people subscribe to Disciple Dojo YouTube channel? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, they should. He will post, you post stuff about the Bible, so if you want to learn more about Jesus, subscribe and you get all notifications. There you go. If they click the notification icon, then it'll pop up whenever I post a new video. We'll do that. Do that. You heard it from the expert. And then like it. Should they share it with their children's ministers and Sunday school teachers? Share it with your pastors. And pastors. Yes. These are all great ideas. You're so smart. So we're going to go to the beach now. Yep. All right. Let's go. I'm going to sweat. So those were Nat's and my thoughts on these three children's study Bibles. If you enjoyed this video or any of the other reviews or material here at Disciple Dojo, we would really appreciate your support by clicking like, subscribe, and the notifications bell. That really, really helps us out. And Disciple Dojo is a 501c3 nonprofit teaching and outreach ministry, and we rely entirely on donor funding. So if you enjoy this ministry, if you benefit from this ministry, and you think others around the world would benefit from this ministry, we would love for you to consider becoming a monthly dojo donor. You can do that at the link in the description below. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time back here at Disciple Dojo. I like this question. Why did Jesus have to die? And what does it tell us? The Bible says that the penalty for sin is death. And Jesus died for us Mm -hmm. because we sin. 
and we should have been the ones to die, but Jesus took all that on to himself instead of making us pay for it. Because we couldn't. We could only we could only die for our own sins. We could never pay for the sins of the world because we're not God. So, so God Jesus would have to be had to die. Yeah. Jesus who is God would have to take on and the sins. And he could have said no, but he he would went there and yeah. died. Yeah, he did it willingly. In the Bible, it said that he was sad whenever he did it. Yeah. Like, and he said, if there's another way, wait, what was it? Yeah. If yeah. there's another way, let there be that. If there's any other way, God, let, let's do that, not this. We yeah. didn't say it like that. but I mean, that's what he I would say. He used the phrase please. He said, take this cup from me. That means like the cup, like what you have to drink. You know, like we say the phrase, you just got to take your medicine. Even if we're oh, not yeah. talking about medicine, what we mean is you just got to yeah. do it. That's what you just got to drink the cup, off. rip the bandaid off. That's another. That's yeah. What mom always tells me. Yeah, and she doesn't. She's not talking about literal band aids. Sometimes. sometimes she's talking about you just have to get through whatever you have to get yep. through. Well, Jesus, that's the image he uses with the cup because they would say, "Hey, here's your cup. You got to drink it," and that's a way of saying you got to go through with this. So he said, "God, if there's any other way, let this cup pass." Like, don't make. Oh me yeah, do he said, "Let this cup pass." That's what he meant by it. It was a figure of speech. Yeah. yeah.